What's up everybody, The Network Berg here, hope you've been doing well. In this video we will be discussing VRF route leaking. So this is going to be a bit of a continuation of the last few videos in the series and it's something very interesting. I like doing this and you'll get to also work a bit with route distinguishers and route targets and stuff. So it's, it's pretty fun. Um, anyways, I just want to remind everybody, please like, share the video, comment on the video if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions. I love talking to you guys and yeah, let's get into the video. Okay, so VRF route leaking. It might sound like a very complex subject and it is because it requires a lot of building blocks to get it to work. But if you have everything in place, then running this network is very easy. So why do we want to VRF route leak? Typically, this would involve maybe setting up a management network that's able to get to all of your links that you've got set up between your edge and your customers so that you can monitor the links and see if they are down. Because typically in an ISP network, your customers might have overlapping LAN subnets and all that stuff. And that's the nice thing why you can put them in their own VRFs. But the links which come into your actual network, you're probably giving each link, like on this diagram, a unique either a slash 30 or slash 29 subnet in order to bring the service into the network. And you'd want to be able to get or monitor these subnets in case something happens so that you can quickly identify is there an outage or is it just the customer's link that went off or is there a bigger issue <laughs> so that's typically why we want to bring in a management network um, the management network you could put it anywhere in your core it doesn't matter where it is um, just as long as it is a vrf that can also participate in all of the listening that's happening on your core network so that you can pull in and export routes uh, just so that you can get to all of your sites. Now, our objective for this is we're gonna get this management PC, which is going to be on this 10.80.5.0/24 range, to get to all of these 172.18.0.0 subnets, so that we can effectively monitor the link. We could have had PRTG there or SolarWinds or the dude or something, so we could actually monitor the links. And this will now allow us to ping or send ICMP messages or SNMP or whatever to get to our CPE's WAN IP and verify if the stuff is up or down. Now, um, I'm going to configure my management network on this uh, ASBR. So I've connected this on Ether5 on the ASBR. I think I've already assigned the IP addresses, but let's just quickly check. I'll go into Winbox and I'll connect. And let's just close all the windows. Let's look at our IP addresses. And yes, I've got 10.85.1 slash 24 on Ether5, perfect. So first thing that I want to do is, I'm going to create my own VRF for the management. So let's go into our IP, let's go into our routes, let's go to VRF, hit the plus. What am I going to call this? I might just call this MGMT for management and my interfaces will be ether5 because that's actually going to my management network if it was going to a different router that's fine as well it's just about learning the routes for the management network route distinguisher very important so throughout my network i've been using 6502 and then we can make a colon and i'll make this 1000 for the management network import rules I'll import 6502 and 1000 and I'll export 6502, 1000. And we're gonna come back to this just now. Remember the route distinguisher, it's important because think of this as an additional tag that's added when the information gets sent over the BGP and the MPLS that the other routers learn about so it knows if I see this route distinguisher, it's actually belonging to this VRF. So let's apply that. That is now part of my management VRF. Other thing that I wanna do is I just want to add the VRF on the BGP for it. So I'm going to go into my routing and BGP. I'll go to my VRFs. I'll say the instance is AS65002. Routing mark will be management. I don't really need to really do much here, but I will do redistribute the connected routes and I'll apply this. So this should go black in a second and perfect. Well, <laughs> it's not black yet. I can just give it a moment. I can do this. There we go. And next step will be for us to actually work on the PEs where our links are coming into the customers. So I'm just going to start on PE1. 
So let me Winbox into PE1. I'll show you how to do this from Winbox as well. I'll connect onto ROM on to PE1. And there's PE1's router. And now from PE1, I don't need to add VRFs or stuff here. What I need to focus on doing is I'm going to go into my routing. I'm going to go into my filters. And what I'm going to do is hit the plus. And then from the plus, I might look at my routing table quickly. So let's go into our routes. And then I can see that I will be redistributing this 172.18 dot zero dot zero slash 30 subnet because that is directly connected on ether 4 that's going to be the link that's actually going to the customer so there's a few ways to do this but i'm just going to do this the real simple way to show you how it works so the chain just think of this as the name for the filter that we're adding so in this case i'm just going to call this customer one dash out and then i'm going to look at the route that i'm going to send out to the management network which i'm going to leak and that's going to be if i go to my prefix and i add 172.18.0.0 i can make it slash 30 but i'll just leave it 00, zero and then my prefix links i'll make length i'll make 30. then i need to go to my actions as well it will be a pass through action because i'm just sending this along and i want to append route targets so this is again the route distinguisher that's very important and the route targets if i append the route targets it's like me adding more tags to the route distinguisher so the route target that i'm going to append this with is 65002 colon 1000 so I'm, I'm kind of like appending the management route distinguisher to this subnet so let me just quickly apply that and then what I'm going to do is I've got the chain now, I've got the route filter, but it's not doing anything yet. So I need to go into my routing, my BGP, my VRFs. Here's the customer one VRF that I set up. And then in my out filter, I'm just going to select customer one dash out. I'm going to apply that. And then I want us to head back into router, the ASBR, and then we're going to go into our IP routes. We're going to go into our routes and let's go to MGMT and <laughs> we're already learning the route. So that's pretty cool. So we're learning 172.18.0.0 slash 30. Brilliant. And I'm going to explain to you a bit more in detail just now how or why, but effectively now the ASPR is learning the route for our link to the customer. Um, what I also just want to do is I want to go into my IP routes, VRF into the customer one and here are your import route targets so here i've already set 65002 colon 1000 let me just take that out and add it again so import route is basically routes that we're pulling in from the mpls so i'm going to pull in 65002 colon 1000 and that will allow me to pull in any routes on the management range and remember i'm redistributing the connected route so if i go into my ip routes and I look at customer one I'm learning 10.80.5.0 slash 24 which is the management range that I've configured so basically if I go into the management PC now <laughs> this is why it's so quick actually but again there's a lot of building blocks involved so what I'm going to do is let's just close that open up system let's go into our terminal and if I do a ping to 172.18.0 dot, dot one is my PE and dot two is the CP that's at the customer side, I can actually ping it. So if this was SolarWinds or PRTG, I could effectively be monitoring this customer side and I'd be able to tell if something was down. Also, I would be able to win box to that machine from this management range without any issues. And this does not interfere with the customer's network. See, if I go ping 192.168.20.1, I can't get there because that range has nothing to do with my management network. I'm only learning this prefix, this uh, subnet that's configured on the WAN. So I just quickly want to also do the same. Let's just go here. I'm going to run a ping to 
172.18.0.6, which should be the IP address for CPE2, and that's going to fail. So similarly, what we're going to do is on PE2, I'm just going to go into PuTTY for this, admin blank. Remember, there was two very um, important things. We created a route filter, and we also uh, added import routes on the VRF, and we add to assign the route filter. So it's actually three things. So first things first, let's just do the import bits, IP route VRF. Let's just print that. So similarly, I'm already learning that, but let's just act like we weren't learning it. So IP route VRF, I could edit that, and I could go into my import route targets, and then I could have just added 65002, colon 1000, which is the management route distinguisher. I'm going to save that. So let's quickly add a route filter so we can do routing filter add let's give it a chain which is the name basically so we can call this customer one dash out again and we can look at the prefix and that's going to be 172.18.0.4 and then the prefix length is going to be 30 because it's a slash 30 and we are going <laughs> to set the action to pass through but it, it does that by default but we can just set it anyways and the, the last important bit is the set route set route so we're not setting a route target we are Not setting any of that stuff. We're appending, it should be at the top actually. Append route targets, that's what we're looking for. So we append route targets and we're going to append. Remember we're adding to, so it's 6502 colon 1000. So we're just adding that to our route. I'm going to enter. Now we need to go into our routing. BGP instance VRF, let's just print that. So I've only got the one for customer one. So I can edit zero, which will be for customer one. And then what I want to edit, actually I don't need to do edit. I could typically, well, let's do it with edit. We could say the out dash filter because we could have used the set command as well, but let's say this. So it was customer one dash out save that and let's just quickly print the well let's export it make sure that it's taken the out filter so we're sending that route out we're appending that route distinguisher to it now and then i want us to go back onto the asbr and if you look at the asbr we're now learning these two link addresses for our sites so we can actually get to both of them um, and similarly if i do an ip route print we're gonna just do a where as well where routing mark equals customer one for the customer one vrf we are learning the 10850 slash 24 subnet so this means that if i go back onto this rdp session and i ping 172.18.06, I'm getting a response now. So I can now manage my remote customer CPEs and I can monitor them without having to fiddle around much with the customer's network. And this is nice because we can scale it because the more links we add, the more we just add to that route filter to append that route distinguisher to get everywhere. Cool, so everything's working. Um, I just want to go over the logic of it again so everybody's on the same page. I, I don't mean to insult anybody, but it's just, I know it's a lot to take in. But essentially, on each of the routers, well, not on each of the routers, but on PE1 and PE2, there are VRFs configured for customer one, and they have the same route distinguisher for customer one, and that is 65002 colon one. And that is being 
I don't want to say broadcasted, but it's being learned or communicated throughout the network via the MPLS that we've set up. So if I go into PE1 quickly, and if I go to my routing and BGP, and I look at my VPN4 routes and that stuff, you see it's it's I'm getting labels. There is MPLS involved in this learning, in this discovery. So there you see, there's the route distinguisher for the management range, because I'm learning that actually over the MPLS. Um, and each route distinguisher will be, and it has to be different for each customer, because if you use the same route distinguisher, you're going to obviously probably get an error, but you're going to conflict and like learn routes that you shouldn't be routing. But what I'm trying to show you is when we go into our IP routes and we look at our VRF, very important bit is route import targets, because this is the route distinguishers that you're importing into your routing table in order to learn those routes. So this is how we're VRF route leaking. I'm going to end off the video here. I'd like to thank you again for watching and I hope you've learned something new. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.